Hey guys and gals and welcome to Game Slobs. My name is Coops and today we are doing the first city which is um, a, an instance for uh, going into far, far and ra, far and ra, that place. Uh, <laughs> far and uh, That one. Yeah, what she said. Um, <laughs> so, um, Foreigner is there, um, supposedly. Uh, that's where it was in Guild Wars 1. So I'm hoping that's kind of where it still is in Guild Wars 2. I'm, I'm hoping the city hasn't, you know, just shifted over here or something. That would be embarrassing. Um, so there's a super secret way to get there, and it's, it's to go into this sort of big secret area that only Spear Marshal Zane knows how to get into. You know, and I, I, I kind of thought, you know, as I said in the last video is like well you know there's there's plenty of docks around here where you can just literally go around by ship so but there you go <laughs> logic and all that um so what's just happened we've basically just been into um where did we just go into vile what was the place called uh, where we were arrested and yeah, put in jail. Mordant, uh, Mordant I forget Crescent the name of it Great already. Hall. There it is, Mordant Crescent Great Hall. We just went in there, got ourselves arrested, broke out of jail, saved this guy, and then we discovered that Timey has been kidnapped by Palawa Joko, no less. I mean, what the hell is that all about? I mean, I didn't see that one coming, did you? Yes. <laughs> Indeed. So, we're going to go and do this instance now. Got to go and save Timey. It's kind of tugging on my heartstrings a little bit because, although she can be very irritating and a little bit obnoxious, I do love her with affections unspeakable. So, we're going to we're going to go in there now. Yeah, I'm ready to go inside. Yep, yeah, cool. Let's do this. Pretty, pretty full. Oh. Oh, pretty. So we're already there? Or what? Where are we in the grand scheme of things? Oh, okay. So we somehow got from over here to over here by walking through a gate. Hey, that's talent. I mean, not that I'm questioning the realism of, a, of an R of MMORPG, but, you know... You are. <laughs> Oh dear. I do love the bogeys. What the hell? Looks like what? you could use some help. Okay. Oh hey Canuck. A glorious Canuck. I love Canuck. He's so dry and I, I just love that about him. His his sense of humor. Oh my god. Oh wow, is it wrong that I recognize these paths? Looks like it's seen better days. The city is home to centuries of my people's history. Without it, Valona would be nothing. Farna was home to the seat of the primeval dynasty, the shining quintessence of Valonian life. But then came the ravage of the scarab plague and the end of the primeval kings. Hmm. Wow. You know, I, I actually recognize this path. Is that wrong on so many levels? Yes, yes it is. Oh, it's actually wonderful. Okay, I don't think that gate used to be there. Oh, <laughs> it's me trying to jump over the gate, and it just opens. Kill the awakened, kill them all, in the face, make them dead. Oh, cannons. Dead. So I'm pretty sure in Guild Wars 1, this is kind of the area where you first enter. Rat, get it. 
Oh yeah, make sure those rats die. Yeah, pretty sure this is the area where you come in. So there's like an entrance up there. I'm pretty sure it was. But anything else we should know about these cursed lands before we go rushing in. No. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to find references from Guild Wars One. I'm just being such a nerd right now. Fighting one fallen god was enough for a lifetime. Oh, the prairie dog is cute. I want to kill it. You do know I can see that, right, Nix? <laughs> yes, I remember! Oh my god, I remember! Way back in Guild Wars 1, these were like banging down and you had to run underneath them. Oh, like that! <laughs> oh, damn, son. Quick, jump. Oh, shit, it got me. <laughs> well, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Enjoying yourself there? Yes. Ah, you see. I'm the instant sonar. Hold on that one. It's two down. Rawr! Goodbye. That should do the trick. It did a trick, all right. Look out! Your journey ends here. Oh, behind me. Rat. Okay, I got it. Don't tell her that. Oh wow. Sain, you said something about a scarab plague. Yes. The stories of the real plague are horrifying. Scarabs bursting out of flesh. Oh nice. People from within. Now Joko's army uses dark magic that resembles the scarab plague to strike fear in his enemies. That's just plain evil. We're lucky he doesn't have the real thing. But he does have time. I have to wonder, are we even going the right way? <laughs> Who knows? They have these really cool inventions in the, in the game. They're called maps. Yeah. I know. But, I mean, we... Shut up, Vile! <laughs> um... I don't... Oh, <laughs> God. Well, that wasn't there before. Um... Let's go this way. Why is he invulnerable? I mean, vulnerable. Okay, let's go inside. Here we go. Why are they branded in here? That's a bit disconcerting. There's branded in here.
Hmm. I guess we're going this way. Oh, okay. I think we found it. Why do I get the feeling we're going to have to fight Palawa Joko? Already? I doubt that. You don't think? One of his minions, very likely. But uh, him directly? No, I think they'll save that for the living world. Why with the branded crystal? I don't know, but you can't throw it either. Every time I've tried to throw it, it said no line of sight. Oh no, I threw it, it just didn't actually do anything. I'll bring it with me just in case. Oh, okay. Don't think he wants us getting in there. Besides, there are Sura. Uh, at least Timey's not among them. There are also Inquest from the look of it. Strange. As far as I knew, the Asura were all expelled or killed when Joko claimed these lands. Never a good sign when the Inquest are around, dead or alive. We're penned in. We've got to find a way past this wall. Good thing I didn't waste these explosives on the gate. Oh. Oh, that's they unfortunate. Before they started moving. Why would he target the the Azura? I'm feeling a little bit like her here. <laughs> oh, could not. Eat debris. <laughs> Walls down. Canuck, what did you do? Uh oh. Watch your heads. Ram. surprised how did you get here we chased whatever these things are through some portals trying to see where they're coming from wait what portals isn't that why you're here portals have started popping up all over Tyria and spitting out these things Joko's forces are in Tyria if these shambling rod piles are his then yeah Tyria is teeming with them but if you're not here for the portals we're here to rescue Taimi from Joko. You let this Joko character take Taimi? No one lets Joko do anything. He takes what he wants. Who's this guy? <laughs> I am Zaire, Spear oh, Marshal of the Sun Spears. So first you put your mag to sleep with that blasted machine. Enough! Taimi's in danger. Anyone who wants to save her can come with me.
Can I just throw this out there for the record? Bram, stop being a dick. Ah. Uh. No, because it's true. Yeah, Bram's really not taking his mom's death very well. No, he really isn't, and it's just like, seriously, dude. He's just, I, I just hate that he's taking it out on us. It's like, we didn't kill your mom, okay? Holy crap. I swear, he better come around sooner. I'm just going to, like, rage quit his life for him. Excuse me, but does this strike anyone as an implausible amount of Asura technology to find in an ancient human city? It looks like the tech from Rodanobis. Maybe this was one of Zen's labs. That explains why the inquest are here. They have a thing for that guy. Or else they just got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hmm. Yeah, that is kind of interesting, isn't it? in the ground more trials no reflex stop it They drop anything? No. Ah, branded crystals. Here we go. Maybe we need the branded crystals. Fired up. There's a pressure plate just there. No, but there's pressure plates here. Drop it on there. That works. Ah. Think you're gonna need more weight. Oh. You need to drop a crystal on there. S step back and that's it, and now drop a crystal on there. Oh. Did that work or did it not? Flames are gone. Guess not. The wall of fire's back. Keep the big plate down this time, Commander. I got another crystal. Okay. Next, stand on that pedestal, and then you can just throw it onto the other one. There you go, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. We can go. Thank you. I didn't actually do anything, but okay. What is that? Lots of zombie inquest. 
There's a console over here. Oh, good lord. Well, that's no good. well this is... different. Oh, okay. Oh god, now I've got to kill another one of her golems. What the hell is going on? My controls are really gone gaffy for some reason. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, I think it's a mechanic, it's okay. Oh god, what do we do? Just kill the spark. Oh, if you get locked in that... in that purple thing. Yeah, it kills you. Yeah, you're not very happy, that's for sure. Can we not CC her? She's got a CC button, no. I got locked in it again. Oh, I can get out. There's, um, there's, a, there's a generator over the other side. You can cross over them. What's that down there? Oh. You can cross over the um, pads to the outer ring and destroy the pads. Ah, I didn't realize it dropped anything. So it drops a static conduit. Now, what do I do with it? Oh, I missed. Oh, no, I didn't.
Wow, this is unhappy. Yes, what, sorry? Fantastic, I fell down. Oh, yes, I see. Um, there's stairs. Think, think. Uh, okay, we'll run out of juice eventually. After the auxiliary four runs out, just going down, don't worry. Oh, god, timey, stop. Yeah, I can't get back on the platform. Okay. Internal oxygen levels at 40%. What is happening? Weapon charge level critical. Shield charge level critical. Initiating rapid ammunition discharge protocol. I'm so sorry. There's no way to get over. Yeah, I can't uh, seem to stay up either. Way too squishy for this one. I mean, this is insanity. This is just craziness. Oh no. They all died. Ah. Uh. Something. <sighs> Something. Oh, thanks, the alchemy. Uh, never been so happy to uh, smell dead people. Well, we've stopped that for the moment. At least Joko won't be getting any more awakened from here. I doubt this was his only source for soldiers. He'll regroup. We've put a serious dent in his plans. The big question is, what else is he planning? Tiny? Experiments. He has them doing experiments. What kind of experiments? I don't know. Bugs. Something with bugs. bugs. We came through another inquest lab. Do you think it's here in Alona? If it is, we'll find it. Okay. This to me seems like this is the end. <laughs> yeah, I would like say I, so. Almost like I know these things. Okay. You can talk to all of them. Okay, so that's that. So he's doing something with bugs. Maybe the scarabs? Yeah, that's where my mind went, the scarabs. Yeah. But what? Maybe he's trying to recreate the plague that he created, that, that basically wiped everyone in this city out in the first place. Maybe he wants to do it on a grander scale so he can basically make everyone awakened. Maybe he wants to spread it throughout Tyria. He wants to move away from the desert and spread it throughout Tyria. How are you feeling, Tiny? 
I know it's still early, but is there anything else you can tell us about what you saw? I've been better. It's not every day you're almost asphyxiated by your own golem. But I'll live. With Inquest being part of Joko's awakened army, there's no telling what kind of crazy information he has access to. Whatever he's planning, we'll be ready for it. It's good to have you back, Bram. Glad to see you, Commander. I wish it was under happier circumstances. I've been missing my old friends since Garm retired. I'd be under a dead abomination and a pile of rubble if it weren't for you too. Especially you, Bram. Instincts kicked in. Hey, it's not like you haven't saved Bram's neck a time or two. Right, Bram? <sighs> <sighs> oh, God. Well, I gave it a shot. Rox and I were in Holbrook trying to figure out how to get to Jormag, since you put him to sleep under a mountain of ice. These portals just started opening up all around the city. Then those awakened, you call them, started pouring out. These were different from normal Asura gates. They just seemed to appear out of nowhere. Tiny, you mentioned some advancements in Asura gate technology. Yeah, Zin and the Rada Novans were working on it. And now the Inquest and Joko have it. Nothing more dangerous than bad guys with new toys. Hmm. Joko's got no idea what he's starting. Conquering humans is one thing, but there's a world of hurt awaiting for him in Ascalon. <laughs> we have to focus on stopping his attack from here in Elona. I'll get in touch with Logan. Tell him to mobilize the Pact. Let him know we're down here doing our part. I have to admit, Joko's plan is inspired. Using Asura gates to go behind enemy lines. Insidious, but intelligent. My only question is, how did Joko learn these gates even existed? One inquest scientist wanders too far from home. Ambushed by an awakened horde, dragged in front of Joko. Joko tortures him, kills him, awakens him, then picks around in the poor dead guy's brain until he finds what he wants. Yes, that would probably do it. With Joko attacking Tyria, it seems your revolution has become an international affair. I fear for your people, Commander. I know too well the suffering Joko brings to those under his reign. I pledge to you that the Sun Spears will do everything in our power to prevent your Tyrians from knowing that misery. And I pledge we will end his reign here in Alona. He poses a threat too great to ignore. Here's to an alliance between our people. May our enemies tremble in fear. Something like that. So do you think um, Zaim is going to become part of Dragon's Watch, the guild? Um, yeah, but I think the guild might be changing its name from Dragon's Watch to something else. Uh, these portals dropping into Tyria while I haven't seen them um, yet myself. This is actually kind of a big thing for the game, for them to introduce new stuff into core Tyria maps. Mm. I think it's going to change the face of Tyria. Do you? Yeah, I think that's where they're going to go with this. It'd be interesting because they've only ever really done that a couple of times. Um, actually truly changed something within Tyria. Um, I say truly on a, on a true scale as in literally ripped apart a map and recreated it. There was Lion's Arch and Keswick's Hills. Uh, Keswick's Hills didn't always look like that. Um, but then obviously during uh, Living World Season 1 there was the Nightmare tower thing which uh, eventually blew up and collapsed thanks to yours truly um so that that changed the way keswick hills looked and you've got lion's arch which changed divinity's reach obviously you had uh, the the great collapse or whatever it was called where the crown pavilion now is um but we discussed that the other day about how 
you know they originally had it as something uh, the game managers didn't actually like the way it looked so they just made it into a big hole and then created it into the crown pavilion later for the Queen's Jubilee uh, Lion's Arch was obviously attacked by Scarlet at the end of Living World season 1 um, they did always promise that they were going to change the face of Tyria, but then there was these small scale events that they did during season one and uh, I think there was some in season two as well. Um, some of which you can still actually find around. There's, uh, uh, I can't remember where they are in all fairness. I think they are actually around Keswick's Hills. Um, there's these events that go on um, and it's sort of like got a, one of the nightmare tower sort of things there and you've got to do events around it and they've always stayed which I thought was really nice and uh, that something from Living World Season 1 actually stayed um, you've had little changes like the marionette where that used to be and um, I can't even remember which map it was on now but I loved the marionette I thought it was so much fun and that's kind of where gods got their notoriety from through the marionette because um, a lot of our guild would actually tag up for leading each of the five lanes and lead people to victory and that's where gods kind of became well known um but yeah in the grand scheme of changing the face of tyria there's only like events that change really that's been kind of going on um there was the what was it oh i can't remember what it was there was um there was obviously, I mean, you missed this again in, in Season 1. A lot of people may have missed this. In Season 1, there was, uh, you would just randomly get a message up on your screen that um, the Aether Blade and the Flame Legion and the, uh, oh God, what are they called? The Dredge. Uh, they'd all joined together. It was during Flame and Frost, which is what the chapter was called, Flame and Frost. Um, and they would just basically, an entire map would just be one big ass war zone like you wouldn't believe there was just dynamic events absolutely everywhere and you needed a full map of people running to each of these events to then get scarlet spawn right at the very end if you were successful it was so difficult to actually do to get that many people on there get scarlet spawn and then kill scarlet um but they're the sort of events that really you know made a huge impact on Tyria, but not so much changing how it looks. So when you say you know that it's going to change the face of Tyria, how do you perceive that as just like events, or do you actually see some certain places going kablamo and and you know actually changing the maps? Because that I would love to see. But any time I think that that might happen, like with the uh, the Amnoon, you know you've got the uh, Amnoon oasis near in the crystal oasis um i would love to see that completely wrecked with um Kralgatorix crystals and everything i just my first initial thought is no arena net won't do that because obviously spoilers yeah i think uh what i meant by changing the face of syria is i think that uh bram and rocks kind of already said it there that the they're showing up all over holbrek and we've speculated yeah. that the Norn have kind of gotten the short end of the stick, and they really have not had much of a storyline. Uh, we've had Air and Bram, of course, but they've yeah. really not had a prominent storyline within uh, within the uh, within the storyline. So I think this is how it's going to come in. I think mm. that that is Jal Palawa Joko's plan to send in the uh, the Scarabs as a bringer of a, like a plague. I think. That he'll hit, he'll hit over all the areas. I think that you'll have little events in all the areas, maybe even big events in all the areas. Uh, mm. yeah, I mean, you have you fight the Mordrum in Ascalon. I think that's in Blaze Ridge Steps that you do that. Um, um, you fight uh, a Mordrum Husk and a couple of Mordrum Wolves. So it's not unprecedented for them to take something from a new expansion and put it in the core Tyria maps. And all these mm. little changes over time, I think, will change the face of the core Tyria maps. But if yeah. I was if I was to write a, a rather naturally looking story uh, on how to get to point A, to point B, to point C. Uh, have the scarabs brought to Holbrek, the Norn get affected the most, 
-hmm. Bran then, of course, goes on to a quest to find the dwarves in the Deldemore front uh, as a way to uh, combat Palawa Joko. I really do think that that's where this story is heading. I think it's going mm -hmm. to push the Norn to the forefront and also maybe bring back the dwarves. I'm not sure on that one because a lot of people have said, nah, they're never going to bring back the dwarves, but I don't know. Uh, I, I, of course, would like to see the Tengu... Uh, I'd yeah. like to see a storyline with them, but I would really like to see the Norn reconnect to their past, specifically their past that, that connects them to the dwarves. And this would probably mm. be the best way to open up that storyline is to see Holbrek actually get hit the hardest. Yeah, I mean, during Flame and Frost, um, there was a little area uh, called Cragstead, which, yep. was, which was added in. Um, and that, that wasn't in, I don't think, anyway, I don't think it was actually in the original um, core Tyria. And Cragstead is where Bram was born. And yeah. part of the, part of the, well, that was his, like, his hometown is Cragstead. Um, and part of the story was, was going there um, because the Flame Legion and all that, they were just popping up everywhere for no reason. Um, and obviously you've seen the fractal where you've got the char and the, um, the dredge. Um, the Berserker and the whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it Bruiser and the other one. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Yep. Yeah, that one. Uh, that was part of uh, Flame and Frost. So that was that was part of that sort of uh, content that we were given. Um, and uh, Cragstead was actually hit pretty hard. And the Norn were hit pretty hard. A lot of uh, the events went on in Wayfarer Foothills. Uh, there were sort of like portals opening and you'd, you'd find like uh, Flame Legion and Dredge all coming out of there and, and causing loads of havoc and it was all orchestrated by Scarlet. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, they were uh, quite majorly involved in that, but I completely 100% agree with what you said that the Norn have sort of taken a backseat with everything, really, haven't they? You've got the Azura who are like, they're the smart guys who put everything forward technologically wise. You've got the humans who are sort of like the big grand army, you know, the pact of, as such. You've got the army and then you've got the, the ruthless Char who, again, they've got all their war machines. Um, you've got the Silvari who are just the Silvari you know connected to Mordremoth that was their major story arc they were connected to Mordremoth so they were all like going crazy and killing everybody but then where's the stuff about the Norn yeah I don't that's really the see thing any is, sort uh, of there's, stuff there going there's not really been Norn. anything about the Norn they, yeah they've kind yeah. of been pushed to the background and I think that the the best way for the devs to fix this is to introduce a storyline that is putting the Norn to the forefront. And the best way to do that would be through the storyline, have the Norn be hit the hardest by the plague because they're the least likely to have, you know, uh, the the knowledge to know how to defeat these portals. They're, uh, while they're, we can roll characters that are like a necromancer or an elementalist Norn, it's kind of rare that people actually do that. Mm. They tend to be the warrior type. Um, and I think what this is going to do is bring the, the Azorin and the Norn together, which is going to sound very strange when I say that. But <laughs> uh, the Azorin are going to have the technology and the know-how on how to shut down these portals. And they're also yeah. going to have uh, probably the medicinal background along with the Norn, because the Norn are very much so into the spirits and, and staying within nature. I think the two groups will come together to defeat the plague and also to shut down these portals and ultimately find a way to contact the dwarfs to see what they can do next, either to defeat Palawa Joko or to put mm. all the dragons back to sleep. I'm not sure where that storyline is going to go, but I do Whether think they... that seems to be where it's heading. Yeah, I mean, whether they're actually going to find the dwarves um, or whether we're just going to happen across them, I think it's probably more likely that they will happen across them. I don't think the... Um, the Norn would seek out help from anyone because they're a very proud race. Um, Indeed. And Norns are a one-man army. You know, they're, they're very proud like that. So I don't think they would ever seek help 
from anybody. No, um, I think it's going to be more of a storyline of uh, like yeah. the Dragon's Watch, uh, including Bram, going out looking for ancient knowledge of maybe the dwarves connecting to the dragons or something along those lines. Whether yeah. or not it's going to be related to Palawo Joko, I haven't quite figured out yet. It seems to be kind of uh, up in the air. Um, but I think if this is going to all connect back to Guild Wars 1, uh, specifically the Ascension process, uh, Palawa Joko, of course, uh, bringing back the Sun Spears, bringing us back to the Crystal Desert, I think they're going to mm. just make everything come full circle is kind of what they're aiming for. That seems to be what the storyline wants to go, the direction it wants to go, is bring everything full circle. Yeah. I and in order so. to do so, and in order to do a big grand story epic like that, they would need to bring all the races of Tyria into one uh, one group. And if you look at the group, you look at Dragon's Watch. Every race is actually represented. You have humans, you have Char, you have Norn, you yeah. have uh, Azorin. So everybody's represented, but not really had a big part to play. The Norn haven't had a big part to play in the story because, like you said, they're one-man armies. They actually don't even have an army. They don't even have a squad. They have no idea of the concept. They just don't understand it. They figure every one person can do it on their own. They don't need an army. And yeah. I think that this plague will diminish their numbers enough that they'll realize that they have to join with the rest of the races of Tyria. And they'll stop being so separate, and they'll start being a part of the grand scheme Absolutely. of things, which would be a nice evolution for the Norn. Mm -hmm. It would still allow them to remain their characteristics of tending to be like a one-man army, but bringing them more into the fold. Uh, the Char, of course, have been brought more into the fold, and nobody ever thought the Char and the humans would actually get along, but uh, that seems to be happening now. So yeah, now you've got to bring did. the Norn into it. Well, only time will tell what is going to happen in the future. Um, but it's always good to, uh, to discuss and a little bit of food for thought. I'm sure we can come back and do a Mahusa video on this. Um, I, I would very much like to sort of have uh, a few videos... Uh, where myself and Violet and anyone else for that matter, uh, we all get together um, and we and we discuss what we think is going to happen moving forward. Um, sort of, you know, pointing out different angles and everything within the story. But it's definitely food for thought. Um, I think we will think on this. We will go back and do all of the bonus achievements because why not? Uh, we will get map completion. Got a lot of things to do, so um, I just want to say with this um, this chapter, I thought was really really good. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It was quite a tense ending. Um, what would have made it a little bit better for me is the false death. The the oh my god, Timey bursts out of the machine and she's dead. You know, like the like the the disney oh no she's dead and then suddenly it's like <gasps> you know kind of kind of moment <laughs> where she just kind of wakes up and it's like oh oh my god thank god thank god she's alive you know i think it probably would have been better with one of those moments but you know we got uh we got this moment instead but there you have it anyway this video has gone on for quite some time so <laughs> we're gonna wrap things up here um thank you vile for joining me for this um for this chapter um i hope you can come back and join me for the next chapter if you are up for that absolutely thank you for having Excellent. me no problem at all um oh and a new build's available in 10 minutes that was timing and a half right there <laughs> there we go there we go um thank you again to nix for always being there joining us he has fallen asleep we did kind of talk him to to an early slumber but that's fine that's fine don't worry oh wait is he typing i can hear him typing what's he gonna say <laughs> <laughs> he'll get over it it's fine fine <laughs> if not we already have yeah <laughs> we've moved on anyway thank you very much for watching guys i know this one's been a long one but i hope it's been very insightful for you uh feel free to leave your comments below telling us what you think is going to happen and food for thought for us to think about and perhaps discuss in future videos i think that'd be really interesting that we can take you know your sort of suggestions your theories and discuss them on your behalf. And if you want to join us, then you're more than welcome to join us. But for now, that is all from me. And this is all from Vile. So, 
I love you all with affections unspeakable. Vile. Bye. Goodbye.